Welcome to episode 48 of the Let's Talk Thyroid podcast. Today I'm having a chat with Elise Garth, who's a member of our online Let's Talk Thyroid Facebook group. Elise is an amazing, energetic, very inspiring woman who happens to be, you know, she's a mum, she's a business owner, she's got a health and life coaching business, she's got a degree in health sciences, majoring in nutrition and food, she's a triathlete, uh, representing Australia at um, triathlon world championships and she also works part-time in the corporate world so she is one high energy adventurous goal-driven um, inspiring women who is managed on top of all of that proactively is managing her thyroid health uh, in a way that I guess enables her to do all the things that she does so, so today in this conversation we're chatting about things like early detection and symptoms medication gut health and diet mindful eating, boundary setting, meditation. We, we touch on the thyroid personality, uh, high intensity exercise and managing sort of um, thyroid health in amongst, you know, and that high energy exercise. We talk about her work as a health coach, working with other women with thyroid and other, you know, similar kind of conditions and, you know, what she finds works with for them and, what, and, um, and maybe what doesn't. So join me as we listen, uh, as you listen to this conversation I have with Elise all about her thyroid story. Hi, and welcome to the Let's Talk Thyroid podcast, where we discuss different aspects of living a healthy thyroid lifestyle, positively and practically, so that you can really thrive and not just survive. So join me, your host, Annabelle Bateman, and Let's Talk Thyroid. Okay. Welcome, Elise, to the Let's Talk Thyroid podcast. Uh, it's really great that you're here to sh share your thyroid story. I know people are going to really get a lot out of it. Lovely. Thanks for having me, Annabelle. Yeah, that's my pleasure. Uh, you know, I really am a firm believer that the more of us that share our stories, the more people that are going to benefit because there'll be people listening now to you to share your story that are going to resonate with it in a way that, if I, just, if I was the only one that told my story, they wouldn't resonate with that. And so I love that. And I love, you know, I'm a people person. I love getting to know people and their stories. And I can talk health and what have you a lot <laughs> with people. So I just really enjoy it. Uh, so tell Lovely. us, Elise, a little bit about you. Like, tell us a little bit, bit about you and then we'll dive into your thyroid story. Yeah, sure. So... Um, I live in Mackay, Queensland, and I juggle quite a few balls. So I'm a mum. I also have my own health and nutrition business. I also work part-time in the corporate world in a leadership position for a large organisation. And I'm also a hiker, triathlete, and avid beach lover. So that's they're my sort of top things that um, yeah, I wow. uh, love doing. So a bit of adventure, um, as well as, you know, I guess just living life to the fullest and um, really try to get every minute out of the day so with my thyroid journey uh, when it has not been you know working with me it has been very frustrating um, because you know I do like to you know pack every day full of what I can yeah wow that's and I know one of the things that we're going to dive into is some of all of that physical activity so we'll get we'll come to that in a minute I'm just sort of exhausted listening to that <laughs> I just remember, so you were telling me before we started recording that you've got a two-year-old. And so that in itself is exhausting in my world. So the fact that you can do multiple jobs, you know, business job, all that activity and have a two-year-old, more power to you. That's why we, we want to hear you. what, what your secrets are. <laughs> Sounds good. No, very happy to share. Yeah. And Mackay, you know, that nice and warm for those that are listening from around the world that's yeah beautiful tropical part of Australia it sure is yeah, yeah. it was actually one of my uh, draw cards for moving um it was that I could finally get to do triathlons so I've never been able to do triathlons because well, I could have but I lived in Melbourne and Canberra and they weren't so Ooh, cold they weren't the most um yeah they weren't the most inviting places to start my triathlon journey so as soon as I moved to Mackay Queens I was like that's it fuck it this time we're gonna tick off the triathlon so yeah it was one of the, the best things for moving up here yeah I'll bet yeah I don't think you'd want to be in the in the water in Canberra or Melbourne really so yeah yeah well welcome to Queensland <laughs> thank you so Elise when did you first tell, tell us a bit about the history of your thyroid like how, what what when were you diagnosed what symptoms were you experiencing what made you get it go get it tested let's go back in time to that 
and tell us yeah what happened sure so I was officially diagnosed in 2011 however my mum also so she had uh, Hashimoto's uh, thyroid disorder as well so she was very aware and so Mm -hmm. she noticed quite early on um, in my teenage years that I had quite a fat neck and uh, she was always very conscious of that and she did start getting me tested and asking the doctors Mm. to test my thyroid blood panel but originally they were just fine and they just said that they would monitor them but then they did start um, creeping up and especially the antibody numbers so that was a bit of a red flag to sort of indicate yeah. well I could possibly be going down a similar path that my mum went down however um, they pretty much the doctors and specialists that we were seeing at the time they were just sort of like well until it gets and I'm sure you've heard this with your listeners a lot mm-hmm. until it gets out of those levels and you know out of the reference ranges then we won't do anything about it and then you'll just go on to medication um and I guess because my mom had done that her whole life I just thought oh well that's normal uh, you know as soon yeah. as those thyroid labs don't you know match up to what they should be well I'll just go on the thyroxine like she has and manage my life from there yeah so so you, your mum great mum could see all the you know could see the signs and knew what to look for because she'd experienced that um but wasn't sort of aware of a whole lot of you know she was just taking a thyroid medication not aware of some of the other things that we can do yeah correct yeah and she did get diagnosed later on in her life as well so I got diagnosed very early yeah Um, whether or not she might have needed to be diagnosed early, I'm not sure but um yeah it was I guess and you know going back I feel that there's been a lot of like we're you know, there's a lot more information available to us. You know, there's so much, you know, yeah. people online space as well now. Um, so, yeah, but she, yes, she just was, you know, on the medication journey yeah. and then that was sort of yeah. like just expected that I would go down the same journey as well. Yeah. So over what time, so you're obviously getting tested from when you were a teenager. How long yeah. did it take to get to the point where things, or, or did you wait till your thyroid wasn't functioning properly before you started doing things about yeah. it or what happened there so it was really um it was I was getting tested it was sort of the last so it was yeah officially 2011 2010 was when I was finishing my last year of university and mm-hmm. you know I was juggling multiple jobs mm-hmm. I was doing my university placement I was applying for graduate positions and jobs once I finished uh, and it was a pretty stressful time in it was, my life that was um, when I was diagnosed as well my last year oh, of university. yeah so there can, you go yeah. there you go yeah uh, so it was yeah it was then that and I had been tested you know earlier on and that's when I was sort of like oh yeah these antibodies they're, they're definitely starting to creep up mm. um but then it was then we started I believe if I go back in time, it was, yeah, then we sort of went to six months and three monthly testing. And then it wasn't till sort of 2011, I was already feeling the symptoms. And like with my university, like I was juggling a lot, but you know, I was felt like I needed to have a sleep underneath my desk. Yeah. So what I was going to say, what were the, yeah, what were the symptoms that you were noticing by that point? Fatigue. so it was the fatigue, really bad fatigue. Like just mm-hmm. felt like I'd been run over by a bus. The any opportunity that I got where I could sleep with my alarm not being turned on, mm-hmm. I would just sleep, you know, 12 to 14 hours. And the other thing was, you know, just that that brain fog and the sharpness of my mind really reducing and, you know, walking into rooms and being like, hang on, what did I come in here for? Yeah, and then you go right. out again, then you go back and like, oh, that's right. I needed to put this in the bookshelf. Yeah, or, you I, know, that still happens to me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so those were the symptoms yeah those sort of yeah yeah, brain fog fatigue yeah how did you were you it sounds like you might have always been a pretty physically active person was that right like so in those sort of teenage early uni years you were you know pretty fit and active as well yes I was yeah so So did you notice a difference there like like, it did wasn't you... so well. I guess it, I couldn't pinpoint it to exercise, mm. um, but yeah. I have had, um, so as my thyroid journey, I'm sure we'll get into this a little bit deeper, but mm. as my thyroid journey progressed, especially after having Sienna, that's when I could really tell like my adrenals were stressed to the max. And, you know, sometimes I'd literally have to lie down for 15 minutes before going for a run and then a run that, you know, normally you know because I was a longer distance runner so a 10k run was quite normal for me mm-hmm. you know normally I'd be buzzing bouncing you know feeling really great after my 
uh, run. But then, you know, at that point in my thyroid journey, um, I did just, oh, you, I just felt like I'd been hit by hit by a truck again sort of thing. So yeah. um, I didn't experience that with the exercise early on, um, but I possibly, yeah, I wouldn't have been training at the capacity, that same um, sort of, I guess, the strength as well as the timing and the intensity. So the exercise, yeah, early days, it was it wasn't, wasn't so much of a problem. I couldn't, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. pinpoint it to exercise. Yeah. 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 And so initially we you did you start down the same path that your mum had gone down with the medication? Yeah, yeah. So I just went straight on to a T Thor, um, which was just thyroxine replacement. And you know, that did take quite a few months to get right, as I'm yeah. sure a lot of people, yeah. you know, it's just every six weeks getting tested, making mm. a slight tweak, then six weeks again, slight tweak. So um, once we got it right, though, um, I was I was functioning pretty good, like, you know, um, mm. and it didn't need a lot of tweaking for many years. However, saying that, I always knew deep down that my mind was never as sharp as what it was prior to fully, like before when I started getting those sort of exhaustion and those first mm. round of symptoms, I knew that my mind was never as sharp as that. I always felt that like there's a slight little layer of fog over it. Like, and I was still, you know, I was doing exactly, I actually was, yeah, climbing the corporate ladder real quick. I was doing exactly the level position. So it wasn't like I wasn't functioning, but I just knew deep down that there was slightly, mm. something wasn't hundred percent. Yeah. Still, even though my bloods were fully normal and the panels were coming back all perfect. Yeah, it's so fascinating, isn't it, how it can look perfect on paper, but it doesn't always match up with how we feel. Yeah, that's it exactly. Mm. Yep, that's for sure. And so from a treatment point of view, then did did it are you are you still on medication? Have you found anything else that works for you to help you manage your thyroid health now? Like what's that journey been like? Yeah, for sure. So I am definitely still on medication now. I did sort of have that sort of idea that maybe I could get off it, but mm. the more I've researched, the more, you know, you really need to get in, I guess, someone intervention early on in those to trial those alternative options. And I've come to the terms now that, you know, it is just that replacement that my body does need as long as I'm everything else is in place and as long as it's not impacting on my life in any other ways. So I am on um, a combination of T4, T3. So that oh, was something great. that, um, yeah. So I did um, with that whole sort of knowing that I wasn't hundred percent like, you know, knowing that there was something that still mm -hmm. could be tweaked. So life got, you know, busy, as I mentioned, you know, uh, finishing uni degree, uh, starting the corporate, climbing the ladder. And then, you know, when I moved, it was, you know, doing my triathlon journey as well as, you know, building a house and just life, just general life things, you know, seemed to get in the way and that little bit of health kind of got pushed down. And um, it wasn't until I actually did my health coaching certificate that I was like, okay, I'm taking 100% control mm -hmm. and authority over my health and that's when I started seeking second opinions um, uh -huh. and I did a lot of um, research so I just read every single thing that I could possibly get my hands on related to thyroid and I was like oh my goodness I'm sure that my gut is playing a role um, my gut health is playing a role and I'm also sure like it sounds like I've got one SIBO, so small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Like mm -hmm. I was just like, I'm positive that I'm going to have that reading all the symptoms. And I read all that candida. Oh, I think I've got that yep. too, I thought. <laughs> yep. And um, then also reverse T3. So that was something that I'd never mm -hmm. been tested for. And I had asked for it early on in the thyroid journey, but a lot of the doctors that I'd gone to, oh, you don't need that. You you know, and I'd tell me reasons for why the Well, there's different T3 views on the me. reverse T3. It's yeah. interesting, isn't it? I, I've still it come is. across that, that some people some practitioners will place more importance on the reverse T3 than others. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. But obviously so, that you found um, that. Was your body not converting the T4 yeah, into T3? Correct. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I yes, I did get knocked back a few by a few different doctors mm. um, by saying sort of, oh, I don't even know what CBO is or I'll send you off to a you know gastroenterologist sort of thing um, and I was sort of like well I'm pretty sure I can order this myself I just need someone that can interpret the information so that's mm. actually what I did with the SIBO I oh, actually went through a lab yeah I actually ordered my own test through a lab in Sydney mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of like the gold standard um, one and yeah and then I found an integrative medicine practitioner and that's who I'm still working with um, I still have my regular checkups through him and I've been 
you know, really big in working on my gut health. So that's been my sort of latest mini project for myself. Yeah. So what are you doing um, yeah, for that? So I think we all, everyone with an autoimmune disease yeah, has gut issues. That's my understanding gut. from all of what I've read. Uh, so what are yes, you doing to work it. on your gut health? What's What's been working for you? Yeah, sure. So I follow, um, so yeah, so I've done, I did, so I ended up with the SIBO and the Candida, Candida which I had mm-hmm. suspected. Mm-hmm. So I did do the wonderful, very oh, strict anti Candida. Oh, and anti Candida. It was tricky. It was yeah, just, I guess, for really me, hard. like I already, I already ate a very, you know, extremely whole foods diet anyway. But the tricky thing for me was just, you know, the taste. It was just so bland for 12 weeks without, mm. you know, being able to cook with, you know, garlic and all the salt and pepper and just uh, normal things. Because that that's the SIBO. Almost... Is that the, the SIBO diet? No, that was the Candida one. I oh, did a so super, super strict oh, one. Right. Yeah. Okay. So right. Called, yes. But um, yeah, so I so did that. So that got really. I guess got my gut microbiome a lot healthier, which is really good. And so now I'm just managing it with a, a really good prebiotic and a really good probiotic, as well as I follow a strict, you know, anti-inflammatory diet. So mm-hmm. I am gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free. And then I also avoid caffeine. So I'm caffeine-free as well. So um, I used to, uh, you know, I was never, I never got on the coffee bandwagon, but you know, I needed that black tea in the morning. Like that mm-hmm. would be and sometimes three, three bags of black tea <laughs> to make right. it super strong just to, yeah. just to get me going in the morning. Um, but yes, yeah, so and now I don't need that anymore. Um, I'm, yes, I mentioned I'm caffeine free. So I've replaced, mm. um, I have a lot of bone broth. So uh-huh. I buy yeah. um, the chicken and beef bone broth and I have a glass, a cup of that every single morning. So I actually lived in Asia back in 2007 and they ah, always started so their su- day. That's true. With a soup and a warm mm. bowl of, you know, really nourishing mm. noodles and sometimes, it, yeah, all sorts of things like that. So it's not actually my husband sort of, he's sort of like, oh my goodness, what are you doing? Having bone broth for mm. breakfast, you know, we're not even, sorry, not even for breakfast, straight up with before my breakfast. Um, so yeah, so, but you know, that's really, I found that that, because that just has so many nutrients in it. Um, that's really helped as well. So mm. I'm definitely, yeah, I love the bone broth. And I did try the bone broth, uh, like mm, maybe five or so years ago and it was very liquidy or then I had the powders seem to sort of I don't know they just clumped together and they barely lasted but I finally um I've used the broth of life now and oh, it's yeah. amazing even li- yeah even living up here in North Queensland where there's quite a lot of humidity um it lasts so I really I really like that so I will have you know yeah either one or two cups of that a day so that's been yeah. really good um and then yeah I'm also i never really been a big alcohol drinker but um also no alcohol really like you know super super special occasion I'll have a glass um but you know not not regularly yeah yeah Yeah. I want to let you know that on the 4th of October I am kicking off my next kickstart your thyroid friendly lifestyle program it's a 30-day program designed to do exactly what it says and that is kickstart a thyroid friendly lifestyle so this is not about a 30-day detox or a 30-day Um, diet or a program that at the end of the 30 days you just go back to doing whatever you were doing before this is about developing some habits that are going to serve you well long lifelong probably into your thyroid health journey so for 30 days we do focus on a thyroid friendly diet which is predominantly about eating eating foods that are nutrient dense and aren't going to cause inflammation and removing your typically inflammatory foods. So things like gluten, grains, dairy, sugar, legumes, alcohol. So, uh, but we also focus on mindset, affirmations. I talk about how to incorporate essential oils into your daily routine. If you're an essential oil user, Uh, there's a daily email, there's a private Facebook group. There's lots of group support. There's a uh, an ebook that you get when you register that's got lots of recipe recipes and recipe ideas and meal ideas so you're definitely not left stranded this is about supporting you um, on yeah, kick, kick starting that thyroid friendly lifestyle if you've been listening to these podcasts for a little while uh, you'll know that that is all of what I'm trying to promote is a thyroid friendly lifestyle. And it's about finding things that we can continue that are going to serve our health well into the future. So if this sounds like something that is, you know, 
where you're at, you're ready to make some changes or you're ready to rein back in a few things that perhaps have let slide over time. I know that happens for me all the time. It's partly why I started running these challenges um, was because I found that just little things that were unhelpful were creeping back in and I wasn't feeling great. And so it's helpful that I find it's a bit of a helpful regroup, but it's also a helpful kickstart. Now, I ran this program in July. I usually run it in February and October every year. This year, I ran it in July as well. And I just want to give you some feedback from a couple of the ladies that participated in the challenge, because I think this gives you some idea of the power that um, making simple changes in a 30-day period can make. Now, one lady was telling me at the end of week one, I spoke to her and she said, I've been waking up for a long time every morning with a painful tummy gone within a week her tummy wasn't hurting uh, every morning when she woke up and by the end of the challenge she said that the program had been a life changer uh, I had two ladies in the group that had you know were getting regular reflux gone by the end of the 30 days uh, and the mid-afternoon slumps were gone uh, there was a lady saying that she she really needed that group support. She didn't know that she would have stuck with it if she wasn't doing it as part of a group. Um, another lady said she loved the daily emails because they were short, concise, motivating, helpful, practical, positive and practical. Hopefully that's my goal. And, um, and another lady that said, you know, she saved the affirmations and really used them. And I think that's where this program is not just about the food. It becomes, I know it's a lot about that because that is a lot of the practical stuff, but it is also about mindset and getting our head right and think, having that long-term hopeful, positive thought processes. So we definitely work on that too. Now, if this sounds like something that is where you're at, that you'd like to make some changes that you, you, know, you wanna do it with a bit of group support, uh, then head on over to annabellebateman.com forward slash kickstart all the information's there. It's only $47 for the full program. And I'd love to see you in the October Kickstart group. Yeah. yeah. So what, um, so, so that sounds like, yeah, a, a common, yeah. And as you say, that anti-inflammatory, removing your typically inflammatory foods. Have you, have you played around with other things? like the autoimmune paleo or anything paleo, like that? Paleo, yes. I, I did have a play with that. Um, I did that for, goodness me, about six months there. Um, and then I started to reintroduce a few different things mm. from that. So I've now just, yeah, I've now just left it to being yeah, gluten, dairy, yeah. soy, um, and just really whole food. So pretty yeah. much, you know, everything everything's cooked from scratch um, because, you know, obviously I'm very big into the nutrition side. So um, I make, you know, all my own snacks, all my own breakfast, lunch and dinner. You yeah. know, obviously when we eat out, it's a lot easier to eat out now too because there's so many amazing gluten-free and dairy-free oh, options totally. that are Absolutely. available to us. Yeah. So we're so yeah. lucky. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so that's been, that's been really good. Um, but then I guess with the gut as well, it's also something that I found um, and that was – with sort of when I was leaving my um, nutrition degree and going into the sort of corporate world, but I'd always thought, oh, you know, it's really to be healthy, you need to have nutrition and physical exercise in place. But it really came apparent to me that you really need that balance and healthy habits and behaviors and boundaries and really, um, I guess, decreasing stress. So mm -hmm. that was something that was quite apparent. Like, I believe that, you know, that last year of university really would have been that big stressor that would have, I guess, yeah, and that, that, that know, was the thyroid coming out. Yeah. Um, so I'm very, very mindful of stresses in my life. So I currently do meditation practices mm. and I put yoga in between my physical activity because that's another thing. Like even though physical activity is really good for us, it's still a stress on our body. So we, um, yes, I need to make sure that that's being balanced and just, I guess, um, because, yeah, I know that, you know, when I am stressed, it impacts my gut and something that um, I love to talk about with food is, you know, being mindful when we're eating as well and not eating in that stress state because mm -hmm. so many times when I think back to it, like when my gut was at its worst, I believe that that's when I was, as, you know, that's when I was most stressed and, you know, as we know, you know, our digestion starts in our mouth and if we can't start to, you know, assimilate all our nutrients and things and digest our food properly but that's, even if we don't have a gut issue that's going to impact on our gut yeah so, that's true um, that well there's that whole rest and digest too isn't it 
It yeah. is. That's mm. exactly right. So if we're running on adrenaline all day, which when I was in, you know, um, particular stressful corporate roles, mm. um, that would have definitely been a big one for me I, uh, when I look back and think, oh, my goodness, you know, that, that gut issue probably would not have been nearly as bad if I wasn't under or put myself under that stress. Yeah. So that... Um... You mentioned before setting some boundaries and, you know, some more you know, well, mindful eating, but mindfulness, meditation, yoga, some of those stress management techniques. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd love to explore that. And I just want to ask another question. Have you ever thought, because it fits in with this, have you ever thought about whether there's, um, I don't know, I've been calling it like a thyroid personality. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Like a about? type A, like a high mm. achiever, go get it. Yes. And mm. that comes across a lot with, and even, you know, friends and clients that I talk to. Yes, definitely. We are, they tend to fit into that boat. So I definitely yeah. think that it's that type. And I also think as well, because it's a condition, it, unless, you know, I guess it can have its signs and people can see, but you can, like I could hold up very well. And it was for many years that my family and friends, only those closest to me knew that I even had a condition. Like my work uh, colleagues would have had no clue. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's something that we can hide and just keep going. And, you know, that's where I feel that sometimes because we are those high achievers and we keep going after things, that it's sort of like, that's more of a priority. That's more of a priority. Mm. And but then when it all falls apart, then everything falls apart. So we need to make sure, you know, that's my number one message. You know, my health is our number one priority and then we can build off mm. that. And once our health is in really great condition, that's when we can progress that career. That's when we can have all those amazing things in our lives and hit all those goals. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I just find it so fascinating because the more people, I mean, I guess I, I'm talking to lots of people as uh, you would be in your health coaching business, talking to lots of people with thyroid issues. And so, you know, we, we are a pretty, on the whole, a pretty driven bunch. And um, yeah, so I've been, I've been curious about that. And it's certainly been, been true for me. And just thinking about how we can use our personalities to our advantage rather than going oh you know I'm a type a personality or I'm too driven or I've kind of beat myself in you know beat yourself up too much or you know but how can we use that motivated yeah. personality to work for our thyroid health and I think there's lots of different ways and I think what you said before is like you say recognize when you know when you well either you know when you're burning out or when you know when you have burnt out and then set some boundaries do some you know we're pretty good at doing work doing the work so once we know what the work is then we're usually pretty good at yeah. doing it pretty compliant pretty dedicated yes, that's it. like you were saying to do 12 yes. weeks of an anti-candida diet that takes pretty hardcore determination it does. <laughs> so, yes it and sure I, does and I think um you know, knowing that you have, you know, you're a, a high achieving athlete and you've, you know, you've really achieved tremendous things physically. I'm really keen to find out from you how that has worked or not worked in with your thyroid health, because like you said, I think a little bit earlier, you know, that sort of high intensity exercise can put a stress on your thyroid. And so how have you managed that aspect of your health? Yeah, so with the high intensity, especially when I was trying to qualify uh, for representing Australia and then also then leading up to the um, competition, um, so it was really just so the number one thing is always for me is nutrition, so having that mm -hmm. amazing nutrition. So making sure, and that was, you know, making sure that I was having the fuel that my body needed. I was training 11 times a week and some of those sessions were, you know, two-hour sessions. So oh I did God. need to make sure that, <laughs> yeah. yes, <laughs> so I did need to make sure I know, sure I told you, that. I mean, so I was exhausted just reading your bio. I told you that. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? Yeah, you did. Yeah. Um, yeah. So making sure they had the right amount, mm. you know, really good you know, just balanced, um, just to be able to sustain that in general. And then also sleep has, whether it's exercise or not, but sleep is a massive uh -huh. one for me. So I need to, so I put so much priority on sleep mm. um, and ensuring that I'm getting my adequate amounts. Um, another thing with the training as well, um, it was just really saying yes to all the right things and saying no to the things that weren't in line with my priorities so I knew that you know for me it was so important and that was my big goal to be you know 
um, qualifying and, and being able to compete. So it did mean saying some no to other things. Um, mm. You know, I couldn't go to every social outing. I didn't stay out as late, mm. but just finding that balance. So where it felt right um, to think. So when, you know, cause often people always, you know, they, they, you know, they want you to include you and they really, I guess people, when they know that you've got a particular skill, they'll ask for your assistance, which is amazing. But it was really just sort of, being like okay I can do it but on my terms so I can't do it right now because I've mm -hmm. got this as my program but yeah I can help you with that next week so still making it feel good and not like you're having to say no to everything but making sure it fits in with what's going to work for you mm -hmm. and I guess for me it was just really identifying my why and you know what as I mentioned like what were those big top priorities mm -hmm. in my life so ensuring yeah. that when I was saying yes to them that's the things that was you know going to help me to reach those goals because we can sometimes get a bit sidetracked with all the amazing things that come our way and especially oh, I know it's little shiny things <laughs> yeah yes, yeah that's it oh I'll do yeah. that yes yeah yes. yeah that's so it. you were so really clear really important. yeah so you it sounds like you, you know you were really clear as to what you were wanting to achieve and you were really clear with your boundaries so that you could manage it because otherwise you would have burned out and not achieved your goal I would imagine like if you hadn't have set yeah. tight boundaries if you hadn't have been able to really prioritize sleep and nutrition and you had have just tried to be all to everybody it just wouldn't have worked yeah that's it definitely and it's also mm -hmm. another big one that I think you know it can be taken a message not just with you know training exercise wise but it definitely came into play was organization and time management so mm -hmm. you know looking at where you know every training session, I would have my bag packed. So pretty much I would do my training session in the morning and then I would leave and have a full day's worth of food and then go to a training session and then have dinner prepared when I came home. So, you know, batch cooking That's in advance. That's super organised. Yeah. Yeah. So making sure and like just, you know, just small things that, you know, rather than having to go to the shops multiple times, it was, you know, knowing what your schedule was and I guess, you know, planning it. So, you know, mm -hmm. planning that week ahead, knowing when the training sessions were, planning what meals we were going to have, what social events were incorporated, and then still having a little bit of time for the, you know, oh, what do I feel like? So making sure that that balance was in there so that it wasn't literally all just one big rigid schedule that I just had to keep sticking to. So having having that bit of a buffer as well. Mm. So planning for a buffer. Yeah. Yeah, wow. And so are you still training at that sort of level now, Alice? Or at no. least was that before you had your baby? That was before, yeah. yeah. So I fell pregnant the week after um, I completed. Oh, wow. Um, okay. So at, yeah, so um. So I, had, I did go back and do my first triathlon, just a short distance, a sprint distance at once. Uh, and I was four months, so I was still breastfeeding and still training. So I got back, um, I was, yeah, I started my walking training very soon after she was born. And then I got back into jogging. And uh, so that was a great achievement. And then I've kept, uh, I'm still training now and still competing, but not at that level. So just local right. events for okay. me now. Um, That's still so intense. I mean, I would imagine uh, you know, I've never been a triathlete. Uh, I've done a 10 kilometer fun run once. That was my peak, peak of my, and I was like, I've done it once. I, why would I ever need to do it again? <laughs> but, but, nice but, and I, I, that was a, a big pat on my back. I'm, I'm not, don't think I'm made to be a runner, but in terms of, you know, just any level of triathlon requires a reasonable level of fitness and dedication. Yeah. So that's, um, even if you're not talking the elite level that you were competing at just to participate in that requires an, a, a well above yeah. average level of fitness. So you, so you're still obviously doing a fair amount of yes, training. I still do. I do that. Yes. I still train six times a week and then my mm. rest day is my yoga meditation. So I, I don't call my yoga a, uh, or my meditation a workout, but it is, it is kind of a workout, a different kind of mm. workout. Um, so yeah. And that again comes down to the organization. So, you know, for for example, today I took my daughter for, I did a 10K jog and she was in the running pram. So finding things that work in mm -hmm. with your lifestyle. Um, I do my bike trainer sessions. So I've got a bike with an indoor trainer so I can do that in the mornings before I go to my corporate and before I get her up. So I guess just finding what's going to fit and then asking for support. So, you know, on weekends, so I can go on a long bike ride because I'm currently training for a very uh, big 250 kilometer bike ride at the moment so um yeah then we've you know, got uh, my sister-in-law she comes over and babysits Sienna on a Sunday morning so I can get out and do a two-hour ride so mm. asking for support that's another big one that's been yeah. a big thing in my thyroid journey because uh, especially I really that sort of really honed in when I had 
sienna because you know as i'm sure everyone who has children knows it, it's full on and you just can't do it by yourself and yeah. if you do that's literally when you burn out and that was something that i guess with my thyroid that i guess being a real positive aspect of having a thyroid mm. condition it means that i do have to look out for my health and do sort of make sure that i am not trying to do it all by myself so I'm a big yeah. believer in asking for support um you know from from everyone and the thing is I find that people love giving support as well because it's a win-win because they're doing something that gives them purpose and they feel good mm -hmm. and um also it helps you out and build that relationship and connection as well that's so true because I think it's easy you know I, I actually think of people with maybe our type of personality don't find it easy to ask for help. I think often we tend to be the go it alone, push hard, you know, just get it done kind of personality. And so asking for help isn't always easy. And so the fact that yeah. you've really prioritized that is, yeah, you're a step ahead of, I think of a lot of, a lot of people because <laughs> that's not yeah, easy. It's not easy. I mean, those boundaries, not, no. I'm probably better at boundaries than asking for help you know if I had to yes. pick um and there are certain things I mean I often say the things that asking for help can be outsourcing things it can be a whole range yes. of different things um but I, I love I yeah. love that you've worked out worked that out you know because I think a lot of people yeah. don't yeah, no, or that we know yeah. we should but we don't because it's should <laughs> build up that courage and sometimes it is still tricky like sometimes I do have to still whack myself up to sort of be like mm. am I going to ask that like a recent example was um you know I love getting the fresh produce from the markets but with the toddler and toilet training it's a little hard to get out of um, yeah. the house at the early time to get to the market before dropping her off to get to corporate so um recently I did actually build up the courage to ask my mother-in-law hey do you think that you'd be able to take Sienna as a morning outing to the market and she was like of course and I was like oh my goodness why did I even yeah. why did I take so long to even ask this um because you know I've been thinking about it for a couple mm. of weeks and then I was like no no just ask it I'm sure she'll be I'm sure she'll be fine and like what's the worst case scenario that's what I told myself what's the worst case scenario she says no she I'm says no yeah that's you got, right. and you're like yeah. oh well that's fine that's yeah. All good. <laughs> yeah yeah um Elise was uh, I mean given that Sienna's two uh I won't imagine being pregnant and living fight with a thyroid issue while you're pregnant it's not that in the too far distant future it's too far away for me to really remember <laughs> um, <laughs> no but, you're all good um so tell us a little bit about what was it difficult having managing your thyroid health during your pregnancy or you know all of that aspect because I know people often ask I often get people asking about how to manage their thyroid health during pregnancy or you know some people have issues falling pregnant all of those and I'd love you know I'd love to know your journey with the pregnancy yeah, baby sure. <laughs> thyroid sounds good I'd love to share so with when I going back to when I first got diagnosed really the only advice you know was tweaking and getting that thyroid medication right but the one thing they did say was as soon as you want to or thinking about conceiving make sure you get your thyroid um, labs tested and wherever possible try and plan for your pregnancy so that was one thing that I'd gotten told you know quite early in the thyroid piece so I was always very aware of that that i would be planning you know, as long as, you know, I'd be doing everything I could to plan the pregnancy yep. Yep. Um, and be as healthy as I could. And as it was, um, it I did fall pregnant quite easy, but in saying that it was a big road. So I had also had endometriosis, polycystic uh -huh. ovaries. So, uh, oh, wow. Well. And they often go together on with Hashimoto's, hand don't they? Hand. Yeah. Yes, they do. So I had the full, the full thing. So mm. that was, um, it was yeah working on that and just getting my cycle right so it took me a number of years that right. um just to even get my cycle and know um when I was ovulating and when potentially so um I couldn't even fall pregnant so it was a lot of years in the making so even though I did fall pregnant quite easily mm -hmm. it was a lot of years leading up to it and getting yeah. that on track um so once I did fall pregnant, then that was the normal um, testing. So I got tested every six weeks throughout the whole nine month right. pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, and did you need to adjust in, medications at all? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So in the mm -hmm. beginning, um, it was just in the first trimester um, throughout the pregnancy that I needed to adjust. And I had to do that twice. So we had okay. to go up and we had to put it up again. And then that was good for the remainder of the pregnancy. And mm -hmm. then 
when I was breastfeeding, that's when um, then I went to hyperactive because I was too much then. So uh-huh. I had to bring yeah. it back down. Yeah. yeah. So that was all good. But um, I guess with the thyroid journey and pregnancy, one thing that I guess I didn't really, and I hadn't done much research into this either, but was the milk supply. And obviously, I guess that kind of makes sense now, but the thyroid hormones obviously mm. impact on our milk supply. So I found it very, very hard for my milk supply to even drop in the oh, initial stages. So okay. um yeah, so Sienna ended up having what they call brook dust, which is that um it's like a it almost looks like foundation powder in her nappy instead of wee. So that was in her oh. first few days and that's when a midwife you, you didn't came out and she was like, yeah. oh didn't have enough milk. So we worked really hard and all I can say is thank goodness for a breast pump. Um, I don't (laughs) know how I would have even survived. So that's Mm. a big tip for anyone. Um, I definitely, yeah. Pre by the breast pump. pump. Yes, pre by the breast pump. Um, It was a lifesaver for me. Um, And it was also, um, it meant that I could, it gave me a lot more freedom. It meant that I could get out and exercise and do all that sort of thing and have you to be a bit more involved as well. And it was actually, um, I did also express more when I could, just because when I became aware of potentially the thyroid and the breast supply, mm. um, breast milk supply, sorry, being, uh, could have been impacted. Then I thought, oh, I, I do want to have a, a store up my sleeve. So I did actually freeze a lot. And luckily I did because I did have a really stressful family event occur when Sienna was about was, it must have been three and a half months. And yeah, I lost my milk supply for about four days. So I really wasn't, I didn't think, that the breast like I guess you know any stress in our life impacts our body but I guess mine was just very um temperamental I guess um so that was really lucky that I did have it frozen and that she you know I was able to then work on getting my supply back up and functioning and Mm -hmm. she could then return to breastfeeding so yeah um that was yeah that was good um I did find though I was probably around the 10 month mark that that's when I was starting to feel oh my goodness I'm starting to feel my body's my body's had enough and I did push through to the 12 months of breastfeeding um Mm -hmm. but it was the last two months to be honest that was a really hard patch um and I think it'd be probably compounded as well from you know doing all that you know triathlon training leading up to competing Mm -hmm. then falling pregnant straight away growing a baby and then breastfeeding and I think my body was just like yeah your poor body was like I'm yeah I'm done (laughs) yeah what what have you done to me so um, I actually did actually that's the um that was kind of I fell back into it almost felt like I was getting re-diagnosed with my thyroid condition Mm. again so it was actually a really bad patch um and that's where we found out my reverse t3 was just through the roof and um yes and is that so, then when you started on the T3? Yes, that's yeah, correct. Right. Yeah, and I did try, um, that we did try the NDT as well, from mm-hmm. the natural desiccated thyroid, but that didn't do anything for me. That was, yeah. I know some people, that's a real, it's a, yeah, some know, people it love it. For people yeah. love it. Yeah, mm. but I honestly couldn't tell the difference between that. And I was already feeling exhausted. So I just kept feeling exhausted. Yeah. yeah. And but it's good to try. And I think to have, obviously, yes, you've, you've got it. a good doctor. I've tried them all over the time and ended up back on the thorox and I've been on yeah yeah, over years I haven't tried anything different for a long time but I have tried yeah similar to you I've tried the t3 and again that didn't but you know that's okay that's part of the journey is to work out what works and as you say those different seasons of life are different so sensitive and it um, is yeah so life stages that's for sure and I did yeah. find with that once I did actually get onto that t3 that's when that sharpness of my mind came back so uh-huh. I was like oh my goodness I've been robbed of this for nearly a decade <laughs> like not that it was oh, that it wasn't that bad like I thought, no but I that, said, like, that obviously really it was really noticeable was enough to yes, that's it. feel feel it come back that's fabulous that's it yeah, yeah. that was very exciting for me And Elise, you now work with women with thyroid issues as well. So tell us a little bit about how did you, you know, apart from when you're doing your corporate job and your mothering and all your other things, how do you, how how did you get into, uh, yeah, working? Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about your business. um, I start, yeah, sounds good. So I, well, I was always obsessed with nutrition. I think probably from about the age of about 12 and I used to drive my mum crazy reading nutritional labels and telling her all different nutritional facts. So I ended up, you know, that's when I yeah. 
finished my high school, I went on to study a health science degree. So I majored in nutrition, health promotion and food studies. Mm. And I absolutely love that degree. And I did think that I'd come out as a, either a nutritionist or go on to get my qualifications as a dietitian. Okay. But throughout that degree, I loved behaviour change. So that was the one that I just yeah. HD'd with my eyes closed. And it came more and more apparent to me throughout my degree, there is just so much information out there on nutrition but everyone around me just seemed they used to they seemed to know about what they should be eating but they just couldn't seem to put it into practice in their busy lives so that was the real sort of mm. I was like oh that's really interesting and my career took me I ended up working with health professionals um, and that's when I sort of was like um, when I actually moved to Mikhail's sort of had just a bit of a chance to rethink my corporate job and I thought you know what I'm going to kick myself if I never go back into the nutrition space mm. and the health space because I'm just so passionate about it um, and that's where I was like you know what I think I'm going to try and stay part-time in the corporate world and also have my own health and nutrition business so that's when I was like okay now I need to have an actual certificate in health coaching and habit and behavior mm -hmm. change so that's yeah. why I then went on to study um, because you know I do really truly believe you know as I said you know the information's there it's really those habits and those behaviors yeah. that we need to put in place to ensure that you know we can take that advice and put it into practice so that we can be that you know happy healthy mm. version of ourselves so that's yeah so that's um how that's done and I did initially start in a different niche area okay. um, I guess because I hadn't fully as I mentioned I was a bit quiet about my thyroid and autoimmune mm. condition um and and but I decided I was just like you know I'm so passionate about this and just sharing the message with other women and I guess as well, I just started hearing so many more people were getting diagnosed, friends and family members mm -hmm. around me. And I'm just like, mm. okay, I, I've had this condition for over a decade. I've been living with it and I've been, you know, yeah. fully functioning. I think that I've got quite a few messages and now I've got, you know, the qualifications yeah. in the habit and behavior as well mm. as nutrition. I think I can bring that all together. Yeah, and totally. that's how I decided to work in that field. Yeah, that's awesome. And so what are you with amongst your clients? Like, what do you find are the most common struggles like is it just that then turning the knowing into the doing or like what what, yeah, what are the what are the is, things that common that, things that you're finding you're working with people on yeah definitely so that that's a big one and like a lot of them have you know either tried gluten or dairy free or that low end you know mm -hmm. anti-inflammatory diet but then they sort of think they go on it for a period of time and then they fall off the bad wagon they're like I know it feels good but it's just so hard it's too to hard. stick to it yep that's it or my husband bring home all these tempting foods mm. and um so that's a big part of it is yeah. just really working on that habit and behavior as well as I guess just helping like them with that you know that organization that meal prep so that they're mm. not left not like you know not left with the only option yeah. is quickly let's get some takeaway and it's yeah. not the healthiest option so that's a big component um again just uh looking at their goals and really because I feel that a lot of us are, as we've mentioned earlier we're very go 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 keep looking keep achieving but we don't really stop enough to really think okay what are my priorities what do I really want to be focusing on um so really getting into that goal setting and making it purposeful and meaningful and not just that sort of superficial level of oh I want to achieve this so I feel good but what's that thing going to bring to their life and then mm -hmm. what's that going to impact on the people around them so really looking at holistically at that big picture mm -hmm. um, of where they want to be and how they want to be living their life um, the other thing that we work on a lot as I mentioned before that I found very useful in my journey is the boundaries as well as having you know a really healthy and empowered mindset so sometimes we can fall into that trap of oh you know poor me or why did this happen yeah. or that sort of yeah. mindset and that I guess then ripple effects onto oh well I'll just eat this or I just won't I'll skip my exercise or I won't do all the good mm. things that we know that we should be doing so I yeah. find that once I've got that empowered mindset and you know reversing it around like as I've mentioned I think you know actually having a thyroid condition has actually made me the healthiest version of myself because yeah. if I wasn't putting all these practices in place I wouldn't be able to do all the things but because of my condition I know that I do need to be exercising I do need to be eating really amazing food for my body um managing my stress levels ensuring I'm getting adequate sleep and the other thing that I also work with them as well is you know just thinking about their unique body so and looking at because there's so much information out there so in my yeah. health coaching and nutrition degree I studied a hundred diets and oh, pretty much wow. my message from that yeah my message from that was pretty much 
there's no one there is no one diet. diet yeah no <laughs> so the perfect yeah. diet is your diet for your yeah. unique body mm-hmm. so I work with a lot of like do a lot of experimental sorts of um mm-hmm. activities with my clients to just get them to see and sometimes that is also the um, anti-inflammatory foods for those that haven't you know tried that seeing if that makes a difference another big thing that I talk about is you know balancing our blood sugar so making sure that we're not on that roller coaster mm-hmm. where, and timing of food is really important I find um, because you know that just helps with our hormones and also especially if we've got you know stressed adrenals making sure that we're not stressing them even further mm-hmm. by you know either starving them or fluxing them with crazy amounts of food so that's a big piece um, as well and then also just that whole, you know, it's not just what we're eating, but how we're eating and who we are when we're eating as well. Like I bring a lot of that into it and I find that clients, you know, really get a lot out of that because mm. there's so much more than just, you know, than just putting the food into our bodies. Um, it's all about, you know, the time and in the environment that we're eating in. You know, if we're eating in a stressful environment, as I, we discussed earlier, you know, the mm. digestion can be impacted, yeah. which leads on to a whole heap of other things. Um, so there's some of the really good things and then just taking control of our health as well so um, like on my journey I've sought second and third and fourth opinions Um, I've seen different people for different things and just not taking no for an answer and really I guess standing up and being in the driver's seat of your health so taking that control yeah um, I really like to empower my clients to you know stand up for their health because you know they've got lots of people around them but you know, you're the one that's going to be the biggest voice for yourself. Yeah, I often say like no one cares about your health as much as you do. No one. Yeah, that's it. So if you're not going to advocate for yourself, then no one's going to advocate for your health. Not in the way that is going to be significant because you're right, absolutely. Like you've got to be, you've got to take responsibility. But that's empowering. That's That's a great thing. Like that means there's so many things. Yes. You can do and try and, you know, it's not a, it's not a negative thing. Like it's a really positive no. thing. So I love yeah, that. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the other things, you know, just the environment as well. So I, um, you know, really encourage people to, you know, where they can remove those additional toxins. So, you know, looking at having, starting off with filtered water, having, um, you know, makeup that's not full of chemicals and I mm-hmm. used to be I used to love all my big brand makeups but they all went in the bin yep. um cleaning products um things you know even just washing our clothes and just even also just you know the, you know, plastics and the BPA and all the different toxins in our mm-hmm. food so we've now um our microwave actually died and we we're like okay never another microwave again <laughs> yeah so just being, being aware like of mm. that um and um and when I also environment it's also you know not just toxic chemicals it can be toxic people in those relationships as well in our life so Mm -hmm. really making sure that we're really setting ourselves up for success with the environment that's around us yep yep I just say tick 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 (laughs) (laughs) I agree 100 that's absolutely but you know that's been my experience as well so um, I think there's there's more of us now talking about these things, which is great because there's still, yeah. as you would know, like from your clients and from people I, you know, talk to, there's still so many people that don't know that there's all these things that we can do to support our thyroid health. So, uh, yeah. you know, if you're listening to this conversation, you know, Elise has given you lots of fabulous tips there of things that you can do. And you don't have to do it all at once. You can take your time. Take, it's like you said over a decade like I've had more than two decades like it takes time and that's okay because we've kind of got to do it forever anyway so we might as well that's exactly right yeah Yeah. no I'm all about yeah I think that's the best thing especially with you know again that behavior and habit change it's taking those small simple and Mm -hmm. easy steps that um like one of my favorite things is you know small hinges swing big doors so um as you said just focus on one thing yeah focus on one thing and then you know once you've really got that in place then start to work on the next yeah yeah well I think um Alicia you've given us a huge a huge amount to think about and be inspired by and try Uh, but is there something that I haven't asked you that you think the Let's Talk Thyroid community or people that are listening would benefit from knowing? Oh, um, oh, let me think. Goodness. I think I think we've covered a lot of it. Yeah. And I, I think um I think it's just, you know, 
when it comes to it, you know, that even if you are in a tricky situation, um, you know, there's so much information, so many things that you can be doing out there. And I think you're taking that empowered approach to it as well and focusing on the things that you can control and the things that we can't control, obviously we're going to seek medical support for that. Um, and uh, getting, you know, I guess, working within the limits of our condition so that, you know, we can be that happy, healthy and um, energised person that we want to be so that we can fulfil all those life goals. Yeah, well, I think that, yeah, great advice. Be empowered. <laughs> that's, that's what I would say, yeah. yeah, like you were just saying. Well, thank you, Elise, for your time um, and your wisdom and your knowledge and your experience and uh, just your, you know, your positive. You definitely, a lot of what, you know, I'm wanting to, promote is positive that being you know practical and positive and I think you've like nailed that completely so thank you for yeah no be, for being with me and sharing your story lovely thank you for having me I really enjoyed it thank you so much for watching this episode of let's talk thyroid I would love it if you enjoyed it if you would hit subscribe and the bell that would be really helpful uh, even more helpful actually would be to share it with someone else who you know has thyroid issues or you think would benefit from listening. That really is part of my mission, I suppose, is to spread the message of positive and practical approach to managing your thyroid health so that people really kind of have more energy to get on with living their life and not just some kind of trudging through each day. So spreading that word really genuinely helps um, other people feel better, live better, be better. Uh, the best way that you can connect with me is through my um, website, which is annabellebateman.com. From there, really, you'll be able to connect in all the other ways. I would love it if you would join my Facebook community group. Um, there's lots of uh, great support there. It's all free. Uh, that And that's, you know, just being with like-minded people. Uh, but from the website, you can also book a strategy session with me. So if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed, not, talk, not too sure where to start, then um, book a strategy session. There's also freebies to download and links to look at my online courses or purchase some essential oils or, or, one, or my cookbook. So that's really the hub would be AnnabelleBateman.com. But look forward to connecting with you and um, yeah, just being in this thyroid health journey together. Have a great day. Bye. The information presented and discussed in this podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure or prevent any disease and should not be used as a substitute for proper advice from a qualified professional.